<laughs> well, let's let's dive into some topics tonight. At the top of our list is the passing of an icon, uh, Sean Connery. He passed away on Halloween of all days. What a wake up that morning. Ah, so you know it's, it's Halloween. You're so happy. You jump on social media, and Sean Connery is dead. Happy Halloween. Mm. Um, well. He was in his 90s and he died in the Bahamas. So. Well, right, you know? <laughs> if you he did all right, if you, if you gotta go, yeah. no better time yeah. than in your 90s and in the Bahamas. <laughs> so, hey, you know, uh, but uh, Sean Connery, I mean, what can we say about Sean Connery? He's been James Bond. He was Indiana Jones's dad. He's an Oscar winner. Um, 94 acting credits. Um to his credit, according to IMDb. Um, and, and that voice, just that, that, that voice. Um, Jeremy does the best Sean Connery impersonation and he goes, I'm Sean Connery. You, that's, that's it. I'm Sean Connery. Um, but yeah, Sean Connery passed away and it was very, very sad. Um, anybody remembrances of, of Sean Connery, favorite roles, favorite movies. I think my favorite of his is Medicine Man. Hmm? Ooh. I like that one a lot. Mm. Hunt for Red October is one of my favorite movies. Love the Hunt for Red October. Mm -hmm. Very good one. It's funny he uh, <laughs> he had a very eclectic like he he played he was in a bunch of mo like strange movies. Like sometimes when you look at some of the stuff he played, I mean I'm flashing to Zardoz right now where he's wearing that weird bikini. Um. He had the, all these weird roles, but he always played like the, kind of the same dude. Like even in Hunt for October, he's supposed to be like this German or there was a Russian, like, you know, and he, he's Sean Connery. <laughs> um, you know, there's all these films where he should be doing an accent or something, but no, no, there was no accents from Sean Connery. No, he wasn't going to deviate from, yeah. Sean, Sean Connery, Connery Sean was Connery. Sean Connery. Yeah. And, yeah. and speaking it's, of the, the red bikini, the red. There it is. Oh, God. There it is. There it, there it is. is. There <laughs> is. I caught that movie on TV when I was like a teenager. There's the floating head. I was like, what is going on? Yeah. That movie just is so trippy. If you've not seen Zardoz, I do recommend it. You, Everyone has to see Zardoz at least once. Just the one time. But uh, uh, <sighs> absolutely. Um, bizarre. He, he just, he, he, but he had, he, he had some really big roles in there. Um, so he had, he had a really incredible career. I, I loved him in the untouchables because he wasn't doing like his leading man thing. He wasn't a lead in the movie, but every scene that he was in was just pure gold. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe he won an Oscar for untouchables. <clears throat> um, the much deserved and uh, kind of unfortunate that he decided to retire on was it the League of Extraordinary, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? Extraordinary. Oh, God. Yeah, that probably yeah. wasn't the best. But I think at that point, he was like, look, I'm done with this crap. He's like, I, you know, I've made enough money. I've got some great memories. I don't he, need this crap. He said that he didn't understand how movies are made anymore. That's and right. He just, he just couldn't. He said he didn't want to do it anymore because he didn't understand the new processes. I yeah. believe, I believe, as a matter of fact, didn't he say that he was offered the role of um, he was offered um, Lawrence Fishburne's role in um, The Matrix, and he he read the script and he said, "I I didn't understand it, I didn't get it." <laughs> he also and, he was offered the role in The Departed that Jack Nicholson took. Oh, oh. I'm glad Jack Nicholson took it. Yeah, I was gonna say he was pretty he, good in that. Yeah, he, he was, was so good in that. Yeah, that was made for Jack. That was made yeah. for Jack. Are there it's any funny. fans here of the man who would be king? Because I love that movie, Michael Caine, and him. I've seen that. I've never seen it. It is such a good movie. You guys are missing out. You got to see it. It's so good. It's, it's basically it's it's sort of like the story of Alexander the Great. He, except he pretends to be Alexander the Great. They think he's Alexander the Great. It's that whole you know, uh, hero's journey trope. But it, it's the it's the actual model for it. So I, I say watch it. It's a good one. Sounds yeah. good. I was going to say, um, The Untouchables, um, I just watched that again the other night, and I, I hadn't seen it in quite a few years. Um, there's a couple of, couple of Connery ones. Well, you know, of course, with our age, I remember more Connery from Last Crusade and on. But um, – when I was watching The Untouchables the other night, just his power in that movie. I mean, and his his part, like you said, Piz, is not that big, but that line 
when he says, if Capone's boy comes with a knife, you come with a gun. If he sends your boy to the hospital, you send him to the morgue. Every time I watch that, I just go like, yeah, baby, let's do it. Like, mm-hmm. I'm on board when he says that. Yeah. And of course, mm-hmm. The Rock. The Rock. I mean, of course, oh, yeah. <laughs> we give we give a little bit of leeway with The Rock because there's a couple of the action scenes where you kind of go like, yeah, that guy will probably be able to beat down Sean Connery. But he's Sean Connery, so we got to give him – Sean Connery will win just because of his intellect. But uh, you know what's interesting? I was watching uh, watching behind the scenes of Highlander 2. Don't anybody, don't anybody beat me down and get mad about that. Oh. But, um, <laughs> um, I won't. I love it. Uh, you know what? I, he was such a powerful actor. The behind the scenes B reel of Highlander Two, I, I was just like enthralled by the man. It, it, this, the, I think it's the scene where he's changing clothes or whatever, and I said, "Damn, Connery had some power." I mean, he's just changing clothes, and I'm, I'm just like completely enamored so uh <laughs> he was great man and I I think just, just cause is another one too with lawrence fishburne and blair underwood and ed uh to ed wood uh ed harris very hmm. good movie yeah i'd say czar Dawes and highlander too would be a good double feature <laughs> <Yes. would> be. <laughs> well let's, let's... highlander too where he plays a, a spaniard named ramirez <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> And and what, is, what is he supposed accent. to? What is he supposed to be in the Highlander movie? He's supposed to be Spaniard, David. <laughs> is he? Okay, but he I is wasn't just, sure he if he was just from Sean Egyptian Connery. or whatever. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, things get kind of trippy there. I know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, like, whatever. He's Sean Connery. Yeah, well, you know he, he he's probably best known for being Bond. He had a very successful run as mm-hmm. as James Bond. Uh, Rahu, I know you've got uh, a specific Bond film in mind that you want to discuss tonight. Yeah, um, even before, I mean, this is a couple of weeks back, we were kind of discussing topics for the show, and I was like, I, I want to get, I want to watch some Bond movies, and I thought, well, I, I'll start at the, the beginning, and I'd, I'd watch Dr. No, and of course, then I, you know, I wake up on Halloween, like you said, and find out the bad news, so I guess it makes it that much, you know, heavier, but yeah, I, I rewatched Dr. No just, uh, just last night, and, uh, you know, it's, you know, the Bond movies for me, like I've, I've been watching Bond movies since I was a kid. It's uh, my dad. My dad doesn't watch movies, but he loves Bond movies. Mm-hmm. So it's like one thing we can kind of watch together. So I've been watching them for a long, long time. And uh, the thing about Bond movies is that, you know, they're all, you know, they're all very samey. They're, the, you know, it's, it's you're going to have a car chase. You're going to have a Bond girl. You're going to have, uh, you know, Bond flirting with Money Penny. He's going to be rubbing them the wrong way. All that stuff. You're going to have it all. It's, and it's always there. But that's what you want. Every time you turn on a Bond movie, you're kind of looking for those same things over and over again. And it's surprising watching Dr. No again and seeing how much of those things, I guess today we'd call them tropes, are are actually in in the first movie. Um you kind of have that trippy intro with music. It's actually the Bond theme in this one, um, for the most part, and then it switches into some some Jamaican stuff. Uh, uh, it, it's got it's got you know all that stuff with Money Penny. Um, it's got him playing cards, chain smoking, drinking his martinis. Everything's in there. Like it's really it's surprising. You could watch, you know, Doctor No, which was his first role as Bond, and then you could watch Save, you know, um, uh, Diamonds Are Forever, uh, which is like 10 years later. And you wouldn't really notice that there was 10 years between them in a way. I mean, he looks a little older or whatever, but the, 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 the core mechanics of what made a Bond film, for the most part, were right there in Dr. No, which is really cool. Um, I just love watching that movie again. Uh, I actually, I, since I bought the, the box set, I, for some reason, Dr. No is the one I've watched probably the most, which is kind of strange because it's not one that I used to go for when I used to watch the movies when I was younger. Um, but it's got, it's got, you know, th- it, a lot of the stuff looks goofy now, but it's such a time capsule for like the sixties. Um, you know, the car chases, the cars that they're in, in those scenes. Um, but it, it's also interesting because, uh, you know, the bond character became this kind of, I mean, it became kind of silly and ridiculous. There are all kinds of movies that are absolutely out there. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking Moonraker off the top of my head, but, um, you know, uh, but, uh, the, the Timothy Dalton kind of version of bond, you know, the, 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 the Daniel Craig version of bond in a way, Connery's playing that bond in this movie. He's a hard ass. He's a, he's a jackass sometimes. Um, he's not, it's, you know, you can see where the beginnings of all those kind of, those kind of silly tropes would begin in this movie. But at the same time, he's playing a very hard ass spy character in this movie. Um, there's n- not a lot of gadgets in this one, so it's really just kind of hard hitting kind of action adventure. Um, 
And I, I don't know, I just really, really enjoyed watching Dr. No again. And like I said, it's not one that I would have gone back for a lot, you know, back in the day, but a great starting point if you're thinking about watching the Bond movies again right now, especially with Sean Connery passing. I can't recommend, you know, kicking back and watching Dr. No enough. Right on. Right on. Right on. Very well done. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, you know, he'll be missed. That's for sure.